so just so you're aware next would be running payroll this is something you know depending on the schedule you would need to do you know daily weekly whatever however big the company is or how many um clients you have this is where i for detail really comes in exactly so if you are doing you know you're and you think it might be simple but if you're doing like you know, a hundred people's payrolls, all of them are hourly, different timesheets. And then you've got a holiday. Yeah, and then you have a holiday, you have to calculate statutory holiday pay. This can get messy really, really quickly. And there are people who don't submit their timesheets on time. And there like, are people that resigned. Yeah, and you know, there are new hires, and then this person needs commission, and blah, blah, blah. So it's, payroll is a headache, and payroll is the number one thing you should not mess up. I would just say this again, number one thing you should not mess up. You mess up payroll, everyone will know and everyone will get mad at you. This is not something like, oh, you misclassified an expense that it it's, you know, from advertising, it should be marketing, something like that. That doesn't affect thing. the bottom yeah. line. This does. You mess up payroll, you mess up someone's paycheck, they are complaining to the boss and you will you know, you get do, an earful. You, you mess this up on Christmas, you've ruined someone's Christmas. Yeah. So just be very, very careful. Oh, and payroll that doesn't stop during holidays, guys. Yeah. So this is the thing where like everyone else gets a vacation. It's like two weeks of uninterrupted vacation from Christmas to New Year's. You don't get a vacation. Payroll still continuing throughout the holidays. Because imagine if people don't get paid their Christmas bonuses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like just imagine that. Not like, going to be a good New Year either. Yeah. So payroll is definitely a large part of bookkeeping. And next would be communicating with clients, vendors, and other stakeholders. So this is what I mentioned a while ago that Jason also mentioned that you have to be good at communication. Yeah, you, you really need to be able to talk to people with this um, and just be nice to them. If you know they're a bit lost or they don't understand something, it doesn't mean come back and be really rude via an email. You know, just pick up the phone and speak to them mm. because most of the time we've noticed that when you just pick up the phone and speak to whoever's on the other end, mm. the situation can be resolved really quickly as opposed to emails bouncing back and forward. Yeah, and uh, try to not take things personally or like don't think Th that what they're trying to do is malicious you know like don't like if if let's say you're disputing a statement it could just be an error don't always think people are trying to you know do bad things to you or, or things like that because you you never want to assume i've seen it happen where the other person assumes like oh they're trying to get away with something but the other person really was just confused and didn't understand yeah. the situation so you know, always give the benefit of the doubt again, you know, and act in good faith. And just as an example, say your client is, you know, one of the customers of this person you need to speak to mm. and there's some mess up with the invoice or whatever. Um, they may not have messed up just your invoice. They may have messed up thousands of invoices. Yeah. So they're probably having a pretty bad day. Yeah, and with this also, like, communicating with, with outside, you know, you're communicating not just with your clients, you're communicating with other people's clients. Think about that. Like, you are also a, kind of like a face of their business. Yeah, you're representing their company yeah. as well. So just, you know, align yourself, be professional. I know, like, some people get comfy because, you know, a lot of bookkeepers are work from home, but just... Keep that in mind and always act in good faith. And I just want to note here that sometimes also, um, especially when a client has had a very horrible experience with a previous bookkeeper, they come off like one single thing. Yeah, it's not maybe, even an issue. They want a clarification on something well, and they come off really harsh. Yeah, just say, for example, that they're used to seeing this expense in office expenses and then you put it in the correct bucket, which was, you know, like a software expense line or something like that, Yeah. right? You know, they, they may come off as really aggressive at first yeah. saying, oh, why is it in this yeah. you know, bucket? And then yeah. you just explain it to them and usually that will be enough. Yeah, and I've also noticed that those who, I would say, have been traumatized by previous bookkeepers, they have a lot of 
pent up frustration. Yeah, pent up frustration and kind of because they want to yell at that previous yeah, person, yeah. right? They want to say, "Why did you screw up my tax return? Yeah, but why like, did you they screw can't. up my books?" Yeah, so like they, that kind of frustration gets put towards you instead. So just yeah. know don't that take as it well. Personal. Yeah, don't take it personal. I say don't take it personal, but like sometimes I do, I get really sad. Yeah, she gets upset. <laughs> um, Okay, so these are not like daily tasks, but these are some regular tasks. But they're that all you very important. Yeah, these are all obviously like important. 